Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Engineering Leadership Series. Today I have Julie here with me, and um, so excited to see you again and hang out for a little bit. We haven't seen each other in a few months. Yes, um, it's good to see you. <laughs> and I'm so excited to chat with you about, uh, you know, tech companies and growth, and um, you know, your experiences in helping tech companies grow. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, that'd be great. I'm Julie Eaton. I'm a divisional chief executive with Halma PLC, which is a FTSE listed um, public portfolio company. Awesome. So um, tell me a little bit about just kind of, you know, I guess what you do and what kind of companies you work with. Yeah. So um, my job is to run a small portfolio of companies. I actually have seven in my portfolio today. And so half of my job is being the chair of the board of those companies, working with their managing directors, which were often founders and owners of the companies before they became part of the group and working on helping them grow. And then the other half of my time is to find more great companies to bring into the portfolio. I love that. Yeah. So um, your goal is really to, I'm assuming, <laughs> your goal is really to help like companies grow. It, right? Yes, so, essentially that is the absolute goal is focused yeah, on growth. Yeah. So how do you, I guess co companies that are looking to grow, like what do you feel like is the, the first step? Like what, how do they, what are kind of the trends that you see when it comes to growth or the limitations of growth that I feel like some people experience that need to be unlocked. Yeah. So most of the companies in our portfolio are hardware tech companies. We do have some software components to that, but most of them have grown up as hardware tech companies. And what we've found is founders and owners, either first generation, sometimes second generation, who are really entrepreneurial, have a great patented idea are subject matter experts in their area. And often they have grown their company to a size and scale that one of two things are happening. They don't know how to make it grow bigger and they're looking for support and help and or the founder owner is looking to retire and they want to leave their company in really good hands so that it can continue to grow. So those are kind of the two profiles of folks mm -hmm. that we normally find um, in our companies. And um, they, they're always a really good fit for us. Amazing. So um, talk to me a little bit about just like generally growing, right? Like, I guess, you know, for those, for those founders who are looking to grow and they come to you and say, hey, I, I, I want to grow, but I don't know how, you know, what are some of the things you help think them through and um, some of the ways that you help open open the market for them. Yeah. So often our companies have created um, technologies in niche markets, but their technology is generally regulated and could be applied to multiple markets, whether that be a geography or new applications. And so that's one of the real ways that, that we work to partner. Um, as a divisional chief executive, I've got my business background around channels, strategic marketing, different geographies that I've had experience with. As a founder owner, they know their technology and their current market and customers better than anyone else. And so it's putting those two things together and really having an open conversation and trying to figure out you know, where to play and how to win. Is it a um, adjacent market in a similar geography or is it same technology in a new geography? And really just talking that through um, with the founders, owners, and the boards and figuring out where that next big opportunity for them is. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the, uh, you know, um, <laughs> some use cases, but I can't think of any really good ones. I guess like, uh, you know, those Starbucks, like little dippy straw things, what are they called? Yes. Like the, you know, the green the, things. Yeah. Like what's the, what's the, you know, what's the next use case for that? Right. Like, yeah. Making bottles not leak. I don't know, but he probably help people think through some of those things. Exactly. Um, okay. So, you know, talking about, I think, expanding into different geographies, right? I know, um, you know, I, I watch Shark Tank a lot. So I actually feel like I'm talking to somebody from Shark Tank. <laughs> like, you just want to grow. Let me help you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, Shark Tank Australia, for example, you watch that mm -hmm. and everybody is trying to get into the U.S. market. Yep. 
So what about you? Like, do you typically work with U.S. companies looking to expand into other markets? And then how do you help them do that? So we've got companies largely in the U.S. and U.K. and Europe. Um, mm -hmm. We do have some in Australia. But but what you find, and I think you can find this in the in a U.S.-based market, too, is you know your market and your customers really well. What you might not know is the actual use case, value proposition, and best channel to market in another geography. So that's what we try to help them figure out, either through, I would say, crowdsourcing through the other companies and collaborating on people who've been successful moving geography to geography. Or in our case, we do have hubs like in India and China. Geography is when people want to go across the ocean and, it, and doing business on the other side of the world is quite different. Really helping them map that out by first understanding what the value proposition they have in that market is, and then helping them figure out what is the best route there. Is it through distribution? Is it through a sales force? Um, those types of things. Oh, I love that. I actually didn't, um, you know, I, I think like, you know, finding people are having a network or having hubs as you call them is, yeah. you know, great. But I didn't even think about the power of just asking all the other companies you have in your portfolio that are, you know, similar in terms of being hardware tech companies, right? And and just saying, hey, I want to grow in India. I want to grow in China. I want to grow in here and just asking right. different. And, and the, the pattern matching. The things well. that, that we're able to bring, I would call us, a, you know, facilitators and, and dot connectors. Mm -hmm. So you may have like a water company who started in the UK, but then figured out how to navigate municipalities in the US. Uh -huh. Very different channel to market. So then we say, okay, we've got another company in the UK that wants to go to the US, different tech, maybe mm -hmm. different market, but hey, can you guys share experiences? Um, so yeah. all of a sudden, instead of being on your own, you've got 49 other companies out there who may have tried to solve your similar problem. Yeah. And you're all part of the same family in essence. So that's right. That's yeah. right. So yeah, there's just making those connections. It's all inside the group, sharing best practices, all of that. You just, you get access to all of that basically. Yeah. Yeah. So what about, you know, growing teams, right? Like, you know, it's, I think a lot of struggles, especially when it comes to growing an organization is figuring out who the right people, right? I mean, especially in small, smaller companies, like, you know, I'm more in the software space, but I see a lot of like software consultancies, let's say, or software companies saying, all right, we're going to hire a first salesperson. Are we going to hire our first uh, chief of product, you know, and like not really knowing what that means? Um, what does that look like? What, like what, what, what do you think people need to watch out for? What advice do you have for them? Yeah, I think there's a couple things first. I, I think you first have to figure out where the I'm going to call it the business leader because that could be the founder, owner or a team. Sometimes they've built a board. Sometimes they do it on their own. But but. Where, where is their head at? So first mm -hmm. and foremost, do they see the need and are they at that transition point where they could do everything themselves, maybe in a 15, 20, 25 person company, but now it's time to expand and they're going to have to start thinking about profiles of people, um, not just the skills and capabilities they need, but the cultural values of the company. So you begin to think about who you're hiring because um, if as a CEO, you've always hired every employee, but now all of a sudden your hiring rate is to a place where you can't do that by yourself, how do you make sure you've embedded in the organization the types of people that you want to bring in that keep your company growing? Mm -hmm. So I think those to me are always really interesting conversations with companies to help bring them tools and resources and just sort of shine a light instead of just running out and hiring a salesperson maybe let's talk a minute about where do we think the sales force is going and what that could look like. And so what does employee number one look like in that? Yeah. And I think also probably you guys bring a lot of the, um, you know, I'm just thinking through like, well, what are the metrics you should follow? What type of person should you actually hire based on your size? Should you hire one that's more tactical or more boots on the ground or do you need to hire a more strategic person, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Well, and you, I think you go through too. smaller, more agile organizations might need people who are multi-skilled, 
because mm -hmm. maybe they're going to do half of this job and half of that job where over time you transition and you're hiring more full-time roles. Yeah. So I think being really cognizant of, am I hiring a generalist or a specialist? As the organization gets bigger, what do I do with my generalists and what do I do with my specialists? Because all or not one is probably not the way to go. Um, and then you hit that sort of natural evolution in a business where you start thinking about your strategy process how that flows into your people process and then what that looks like on daily execution. And so, like you say, metrics, if, if the outcome I'm trying to deliver is X amount of growth in these markets with these products, you've thought through strategically what you're trying to accomplish, where, and who are the kinds of people that you need to do that. That's an evolution and you're probably not starting there day one. How about, um, you know, just kind of the, what, you know, when, when you're trying to help, um, it's so funny because <laughs> I feel like this is an interview of like, if you want to work with <laughs> Palma and Julie, what does it look like? But really, yeah. I think this, this advice is so practical when it comes to, um, you know, just thinking about next steps, right? Like thinking about, Hey, what does it look like to grow? What does it look like to have a partner? Like, what do you actually need to be thinking about when you're taking into consideration these things? Yeah. Um, so I'm really enjoying this interview so far. Um, <laughs> but, you know, when you're having those conversations with founders about um, how to grow and, you know, you and I have talked about this idea of like having transparent conversations, like what does that look like? Like how could it go? I think a lot of founders also are afraid of potentially losing control, right? Yeah. Right. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So I think I can talk to you about from a from a Helma perspective what we do, mm -hmm. but also maybe some broader advice. So, mm -hmm. I think if you're a founder or owner, where we find the best fit are people who have grown their company to a size, are passionate about what they do, and want that partnership. Whether they know what they need in the next step or not, they're looking for a partner to come to the table and work with them to grow. There are also people who might just be looking for financial resources to grow. So there's lots of different ways to find someone to partner with you. So I would first say to a founder or an owner, what are you really looking for? Are you looking to leave a legacy and maybe sell your company into the hands of someone that is going to continue with your purpose and your growth story and mission? Are you early on and you're just looking for financial investment? So there's lots of different things for the founder owner to think about. From a Helma perspective, when we start talking to folks, we are looking for those folks that are that are open and want to grow and want to partner with us. If I run into somebody with a really great tech in a market I'm super interested in, and they say to me, I just want your money, then I really transparently say, we are probably not the home for you because we're looking to do it with you, knowing that you're the expert. But we do think that, that as a company, we have things that we can bring to bear. Those are great conversations. The more transparent you are up front, uh, the more open that you are and the more we try to help founders and owners articulate what they're really looking for, then the whole process of, you know, due diligence and acquisition and integration into the group is super easy because you had common ground. You were looking for the same outcome. Yeah, I can just imagine, right? Because I think when money comes into play, you know, it's like people, people get funny and then it's yeah. like, oh, what do I say to make this actually happen? Or, you know, then it's, it's, you know, the, the worst thing for me whenever I do interviews is uh, talking to somebody who is desperate. Oh. And, you know, like right. when, when you're talking to somebody who's desperate, you know, they're trying to say, I will take this job for anything, anything because I want, you know, but it's like, well, you're desperate. So, uh, right. <laughs> it doesn't feel great to hire you because I don't know what that means when you're not desperate. Right. Um, or, you know, how you're going to react and et cetera. Right. But well, and we don't think we're the expert in your market, right? When we go buy mm -hmm. a company, we found it because you built something amazing. However, mm -hmm. we stumbled across it. You found us, we found you, but it's that conversation of what's your vision, what's your passion. Yeah. Um, sometimes we find founders or owners who are on the 
precipice of great growth. Mm -hmm. And it really is the cash to buy parts and pieces to make more hardware to take advantage of that growth. Well, that's yeah. a great time to partner because yeah. we see the growth opportunity. We can provide the cash. Some people say, I've got this great idea, but I don't think they, they wouldn't really be able to put the term strategic marketing on it, but I don't have the resources to help figure it out. Great. We can do that, right? We can help you profile and hire a strategic marketer for your board to figure out how to grow this company. So there's so many different ways to do that. Could be channel the market, could be finding new markets, new applications, registrations and regulations in other countries that other companies have figured out how to do and your products registered in Australia, but you want it in the UK, all of that, right? That's then we can really use the power of the network and help people figure that out and break through that faster. Yeah. And I love that that just comes from just having honest conversations about what you want. I think, um, you, we forget often that it's just relationships, right? And so you want to go into a relationship and, uh, enjoy the long, the marriage, Yes. That you're about to get into. <laughs> Our, um, we had the same CEO for uh, 18 years. He just recently uh, retired in March, Andrew Williams. And he constantly would say to folks in my role or new managing directors or owners that were coming into the group, lean on what you're good at, right? And share that with other people. And that really is sort of this ethos of the group is if, if I have a really good background in sales channel and you have a really great uh, background in product management, I'm better off not to pretend I know about product management, but to offer you my sales channel experience. <laughs> so, um, yeah. What, so what other advice do you have for, I guess, like tech founders who are looking to, to grow and scale? Yeah, I think, um, being really willing. And what do I mean by willing and open? So um, knowing what you don't know, and I think there's a range of leaders. So if you are really that tech person that built the hardware and you're in love with it, and you are open to the fact that in order to grow the company, you might need culture and talent and people embrace that, ask for help, bring that in. More importantly, let that in. Yeah. If you are more that well-rounded owner that has all of the capability in your team, but you're small and you are passionate, put out a good vision and strategy. It's almost like going to get funding and, and you know, get, get the support that you need and get introduced to the network. So yeah. I, I think it's being open, being transparent, um, being willing to ask for when you need help. And I think more importantly, also being willing to say, we know how to do this. Give us a little space and let us try it, mm -hmm. but be willing to, you know, help catch us if we fail. I think those are all important attributes. And just so people have context here, um, you know, when you talk about scaling, you know, let's say with, with Helma, for example, um, what is it? Because, you know, scaling can mean a lot of things. It can mean going from, you know, 10,000 to a hundred thousand in revenue. Yeah. It can mean going from five to 10, but what does that look like at Helma? Yeah, so um, a lot of our companies mm -hmm. are what I would term small to mid-size mm -hmm. and maybe in that revenue of 10 to 50 million in revenue. Mm -hmm. And so scaling on that, well, you, our growth ambition, you can see mm -hmm. this, our growth ambition is to double the size of our businesses and our portfolios every five years. Okay. And so if you lay that over any size business, the scale is relative to the size that you are at that time. So mm -hmm. that could be um, new markets, new geographies, bolt on technologies and acquisitions. There's lots of different ways to grow organically and inorganically, but we're looking for those businesses that have the capability to double in size every five years. Yeah, I love that. Well, cool. Thank you so much for meeting with me and chatting with me about this. It was definitely an enlightening information um, interview. And I hope I hope people who are, you know, either looking for partners or looking to grow who have tech companies um, realize that it's not 
scary. It doesn't have to be. That's right. It's not. <laughs> Tracy, it was so good to connect with you again. Yes, Thanks for inviting same. me. Today. Where, where can we find you, by the way? How do we connect with you? You can find me on Helma.com. Mm -hmm. um, I'm out there and uh, would be love to connect with anybody that has questions. I'm also on LinkedIn. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. This program is presented by This.Labs, a framework agnostic consulting firm helping enterprises realize their technical goals through staff augmentation, consulting, project management, on-demand subject experts, training, and other professional services. Find out more at this.labs.com.